Welcome back to our video tutorial series on developing with Spiral. In this tutorial we'll have a look at an advanced architectural pattern that allows mocking the backend. In the last tutorial we already showed some best practices for developing a pilot. Here we already started the pilot. Now when you start you always see two messages. The first one just shows you where you can access your pilot. And the second one shows you something strange, namely how you can manage it. Let's have a look at this URL for a moment. Now what you see here is the management overview that's provided by a middleware server that's called CRUS. In a simple UI, you can do a couple of things. You can stop it. Please don't do that. Restart it. Well, I would also not advise to do that. And now we have a couple of other options. We can see the requests that have already went on. Here, for instance, to our full extension from the last example. You can broadcast WebSocket messages. You can configure it or set the different kinds of injectors. Now for understanding what an injector is, you will need to know a little bit about CRUS, which receives all requests that we do against our development server, and then uses these injectors to decide what to do with the different requests. So the cool thing is, let's say we develop our pilot here, and um, instead of having this connector that now goes against the API, put it really against the API. Now that would be quite neat. So it could look like this. We could say fetch from API foo and then just convert it to original object. Now at the moment we have our development server running, but later on in a production environment that may be the real deal. For the moment let's just go with it. And we'll see that the feed actually shows us an error. Let's have a look at the network tab to see what's going on when we load this page. We go to foo and what we see happens is that um, since API foo cannot be retrieved, we just get back the HTML. Now that's the standard behavior for single page application mode. But in essence, it just means that there is nothing found, which is not good. Now what we want to provide is a way to actually mock this. So let's just create a script here. Let's call it um, API foo.js. And in here, let's just export a function. It receives three arguments, a context, a request, and a response builder. Let's try this. Let's refresh. And there you see this is a title. Great. And we could even now add more items to it. We could even generate these items. Let's try this again. This is a title. This is another title. And so it is a real simple way to mock a backend. All right. In the next tutorial, we'll have a look at server-side rendering to improve the performance of our application shell.